hi there. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to happen that quickly. I was just socializing over there. Um, hi. Uh, my second trip to Berlin. Just to give you a little idea about uh, who I am and where I came from, as I did work uh, on the Apple advertising for about four and a half years after Steve Jobs returned in 97, and I worked with him for eight years on Next, uh, which is the company he started, as you probably know, when he was forced out of Apple. So I basically spent 12 years working with Steve, um, and you've probably heard that he wasn't the easiest guy to work with. So during that 12 years, I'm proud to say he only beat me up twice. Um, and if you annualize that, it's actually one of the better ratios that uh, you'll find amongst people who worked with the man. So before we get started, um, I have a little warm-up exercise for you. This is an audience participation moment. Um, and I have a, I'm going to ask you a question. This is an interactive quiz, and the winner will get a fabulous gift. Um, cue the gift man. Let's see. And the fabulous gift is my book. <laughs> I, uh, I really try to unload these things everywhere I go. I have a closet full of them at home. My story with Apple starts in 1997 when Steve Jobs came back. This was a cover of Wired magazine that was pretty famous. Basically, as Steve would say in later years, Apple was at this point 90 days from bankruptcy. And yet, in a mere 14 years from that point, Apple became the most valuable company on the face of the earth, which is pretty remarkable. Never happened before, will likely never happen again. Um, and I believe it's because of this thing uh, about simplicity. A lot of people ask me, um, well, what is our company going to do to, to make things simpler? How can we do it? We're already big and we're bloated. Well, Steve came back to Apple in 1997 after being away for 11 years, and the company was bloated and it was mediocre. And he had to attack it much as any person would today, looking at their own existing company. And he was able to to streamline and get rid of committees and do all those things that, that he's talked about. So then there's the matter of that little thing, the I. And I proudly say I, I'm the author of the I. Uh, it's actually, I say proudly, I'm actually embarrassed and humbled by it because um, I'm a writer. You have to keep that in mind. And I swear I've written longer things than this. But this is the one that seems to follow me about. So I, I milk it for all it's worth. And I won't be able to for too much longer because uh, with Apple Pay, Apple Watch, Apple Music, it is apparent that the eye is being retired, so I will, we must bid it adieu at this point. This is the essence of simplicity, and I love this image because it really does capture everything that Apple is about. And it's not just their products, honestly. It's what you see in that picture is really what guides Apple in all their operations. So I have five things that I talk about. Uh, about simplicity very quickly. One of them is that it's about creating love. The thing that Steve said probably more times than anything else was it was our job to make people love Apple. That he wanted this emotional connection. Um, and there were three reasons why he wanted people to have that connection to Apple. One is they'd keep buying stuff, which is important. But two, they would evangelize to their friends, their families, and their colleagues. And then three, they'd stick with the company when the bad thing happens. And inevitably, bad things happen. They cannot be predict predicted. The moral of this particular story is that perfection is achieved not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to remove. And this is something that's true not only in product features, product lines, it's true of PowerPoint presentations. Not that I would ever make a PowerPoint presentation. I use Keynote, of course, but you get the idea. My colleagues and I, when we put together a presentation, we go back and forth countless times, removing words and pages and paragraphs you know, with the belief that when you distill something down to its essence, say fewer things and say them more powerfully, it's a better presentation. The bottom line is that being simple is not simple. It takes a ton of work. Um, Steve Jobs succeeded because he was two things, not only a champion of simplicity, but he was a brutal foe of complexity. And that's where you hear the stories about the, the various explosions of temper you might have heard about because he didn't tolerate uh, when people were getting in the way of, of the plan. I think for Steve, and I, you know, I think everyone should give it a try, simplicity is this lens through which you look at everything. And it isn't just the communications. It's the structure of a company. It's the, the way you go about developing new ideas, products, services. People who have the ability to, to, to simplify things uh, really have the ability to, to make their company stand out. Because 
in this sense, simplicity is the ultimate competitive weapon.